While some of this video may be a review on some of the introduction to defrost topics, we do need to talk about the types of defrost and some of the different types of defrost clocks. So just a real quick review, the purpose of defrost systems is that they're required in low temperature and extremely low temperature applications to remove the ice that builds up on the evaporator coil. Now ice is formed on that coil when warmer humid air comes in contact with the below freezing conditions of an evaporator coil. In an extremely low temp or low temp situation, your evaporator coil can be in the negative digits. So we have two different types of defrost and you'll see these used pretty much interchangeably. We have the hot gas defrost that uses a solenoid to reroute the discharge hot gas from the compressor to the evaporator bypassing the metering device and the condenser. In other words, we take our very hot discharge gas, because remember, coming off the compressor, we have a high pressure, high temperature vapor. And we route that around the metering device and the condenser so we keep it hot. We bypass the entire liquid line and we dump it right into the evaporator, which causes a very high temperature gas in that evaporator. Okay, and it actually melts any ice off of it. We also have a type of defrost called electric defrost. It shuts down the compressor and the cooling system, including the condenser fan or the evaporator fans. By the way, for hot gas defrost, we also shut off the evaporator fans because we want that heat restricted to the evaporator. And we do the same with electric defrost and we energize an electric heater that is either interwoven into the coil or underneath the coil because hot air rises. Now the controls that are required to run a defrost cycle are simple. A defrost clock and or timer and a solenoid valve in the case of hot gas defrost. So the defrost timer control initiates and terminates the defrost cycle. The defrost frequency times can be changed by adding, moving, or installing more set pins, or in the case of digital clocks, just more set points. And the goal is to try and keep the cycles proportional. In other words, the same amount of time between the hours. And we want to keep in mind the customer's busy periods. In other words, if we know that a restaurant kitchen is extremely busy between 3 p.m. and 11 p.m., and that refrigerator or freezer door is always opening and closing. We do not want to send our defrost during that time period. The same controls are used for both hot gas and electric defrost systems. You do not need different timers as they're pretty much standard. Some do contain a termination solenoid that to prematurely take the defrost to take the control out of defrost when needed. In other words, what happens is we energize a solenoid that actually pushes the defrost timer back into cooling mode once the ice is off the coil, and we do that in a variety of ways. So here we have an image or a diagram of a defrost timer with a solenoid. Okay, now these pins are numbered, and by looking at the time clock, you can actually see where the numbers go. And there's always a diagram that comes along with the time clock. It's usually on the inside of the door. So we have source voltage that comes to pin one. There's a copper band that connects pin one and two. If you have different voltages, like if you use low voltage on a solenoid devices, okay, you can actually um, use different voltage levels by removing this copper band and putting other sources. So between one and two, we have our motors between one and neutral. So source goes on one, source goes on two. And maybe 240 volts, okay? It might not be a true neutral. You have to look at the voltage of the timer motor. And again, that's labeled. Between pins two and three, there's a normally open contact. Okay, in other words, we're not in defrost, normally open. Between pin two and four, we have a normally closed contact. Okay, all that means is that when we're not in defrost, okay, this is a closed circuit between two and four. Okay, pin three goes to the defrost heater or hot gas solenoid. 
Pin four goes to the refrigeration circuit, compressor, condenser fan motor, and evaporator fan motor. X goes to our DTT, which is defrost termination thermostat. So we are now in defrost mode, or we're now normally running. And again, all this did was change the terminals. Okay, this is just a different type of defrost timer. You notice we now have X is our other source. See the difference? We have neutral, we have X, but now on this case, the end terminal is actually a line power terminal. So be careful when you actually look at these clocks. You do have to look at the diagrams because different manufacturers use different pin designations. This is a defrost timer with no solenoid but it also still has an X terminal. Okay, and again, so you really have to watch your terminal designations. Notice the solenoid that would normally be down here is missing from the last one. See that? There's no defrost termination of the solenoid. So where this time clock will allow a defrost termination, in other words, when the coil is above freezing, it's going to pull the defrost clock out of defrost mode and put it back into refrigeration mode. This one will run the full length of your defrost. For, so whatever you have it set at is how much time the system will be in defrost. And again, different manufacturer, different pin designations. No X terminal, but we still don't have a defrost. So again, just be very careful of your pin designations. Your normally closed always goes to the refrigeration circuit, the compressor and condenser fan motor, as well as the evaporator fan. We do not want the evaporator fan motor running in defrost because we don't want to blow that warm air and humidity around the space. So the defrost termination type is basically a high limit switch. It's a standard DTT, which is defrost thermostat. It's set to a high temperature to open when the ice has been melted or the coil reaches a specific temperature. Now the DTT also de-energizes a heater. Okay, if there's electric heat, the DTT will act as a high limit and de-energize the heater as well. If it's a fan delay type, the, it terminates and locks out the defrost cycle and then the single pole double throw temperature actuated switch that runs the fan in refrigeration mode okay will keep the fan off until the coil has reached a cooler temperature when the control terminates the defrost cycle the evaporator fan is delayed until the compressor can make the evaporator cold enough to switch the control back to the EFM circuit, evaporator fan circuit. This prevents a hot pull down scenario on the compressor. Hot pull down means hot gas being returned to the inlet of the compressor. Because remember, the gas, the cold gas coming back, the refrigerant is what cools the compressor. We don't want hot gas being returned. So again, back to these, I'm gonna click back to these slides here. Okay, these diagrams are pretty important, okay, because you have to know what connects where. Okay, these don't have a defrost thermostat, this does. This clutch solenoid that's in the middle right here actually pushes the timer motor forward and will actually push the system out of defrost when the temperature of the coil gets hot enough. So whenever you have a chance, use the ones with the, with the termination, if at all possible.